Hi guys, and welcome back to Practical and Healing Applications of A Course of Miracles with me, Anna Rebecca Quinn, uh, formerly Anna Kajawa, and uh, we are going to be doing some Course in Miracles. I am going to do the random number generator prayer with you tonight. Uh, most often I do that before class, um, but Spirit told me tonight, do it with you guys. So, all right, here, here we go. So, can't way, get any more live than that. Exactly. Can't get any more live than that. So, um, what I want us to do is we're going to do this together. So, I want you to join me in this prayer, asking Spirit for what Spirit knows you need to hear. So, join with me in this. Ask Spirit to bring forth, to bring through that which you most need that which spirit knows that you most need for healing for peace spirit of truth spirit of healing and spirit of joy within us we ask you to decide for us where and what in a course in miracles that we will study tonight together we ask you to be in charge. We ask you to decide for healing for us. We trust your infinite love for us. We trust your brilliant, brilliant wisdom for us. We trust your love for us. We entrust this session today into your care. We ask for your messages we ask for your guidance. We ask for the truths that you know that we most need to remember right now, that we might have peace and healing and joy and miracles right now. Truly, you have told us that all we need but do is ask for your help, for your guidance and that you would answer. We are asking, decide for us, be you in charge, and thank you in advance for your answers, for the miracles that we do receive every time we ask you, Spirit. Thank you, be you in charge. All right, so we just did the random number generator prayer, or as I like to call it, the never random number generator prayer. And the one that always works. <laughs> the one that always works. Um, and I have put in, so now it's in the text, and we're going to be in chapter 31. Very interesting. So <clears throat> let me go to the table of contents here and see how many sections. Mine and the annotated. Okay. Let's go. Let's do the um, the original edition, and we'll look for it in the blue covered edition. So you said it's nine. Uh, nine. Okay. Let's see. All right. Section number two. So it's going to be Passing. chapter thirty one. The passing of an ancient learning. Ooh, the passing of an ancient learning. Oh my. The passing of an ancient learning. That's so interesting because that is so much what it feels like is is happening right now. You know, it's a, it's a big theme in my my book that's coming out in a couple of weeks hopefully. Um you know, the passing of an ancient learning and the accepting of a new and the acceptance of uh, the new earth that comes from the new learning that only comes when we allow the ancient learning, the overlearning to, to pass. So, all right. And then uh, if you find it when in the blue book, let me know and then maybe uh, post it in your um, okay. new chat. I, love, I, see, I see my hair is st sticking up. 
<laughs> like it's like little antennas. See, that's what that I did that on purpose. That's yeah. that's little antennas that you know make me enable me to hear spirit better. <laughs> it turned me into a human radio for spirit for you. <laughs> so you're welcome. <laughs> All right. So we are in. Have you found it yet? Okay. All right, so when we find where it's at in the blue covered edition, then uh, Greg will put it in the comments. All right. Oh, beautiful. All right. The passing of an ancient learning. Let us be still an instant and forget all things we ever learned. Let us forget all thoughts we had. And let us forget every preconception that we hold of what things mean and what their purpose is. Uh, a lot, some of this is from a workbook lesson. So, <clears throat> interesting. So, instructions of how to what, how to let go of past learning. Here's how to let go of a past learning that has not brought you peace and joy. Like everything we've learned in the past about how we are limited and how we are guilty and how we don't deserve love and how we can't be free. Okay? We want to let our ancient learning pass. This section starts off with the beginning of how to do that. It starts with a holy instant what is a holy instant? It is a moment where you are still. <laughs> That's right. That's a holy instant, a moment when we are still. And so it says, let us be still an instant and forget all things we ever learned, all thoughts we ever had, and every preconception that we hold of what things mean and what their purpose is. And further, let us not remember our own ideas of what the world is for. We do not know what the world is for. And so, let every image held of anyone be loosened from our minds and swept away. This is definitely from a, this is a workbook lesson. In the edited, interesting, this was put into a workbook lesson. Very interesting. It says, but, it says, let every image held of anyone be loosened from our minds and swept away. That means be innocent of judgment. That means be unaware of any thoughts of evil or of good that ever crossed your mind of anyone. Now, right now, you do not know them. But you are free to learn of this person and learn of this person anew. Now is this person born again to you and you are born again to them without the past that sentenced them to die and you with them. Now, in this moment, now, where we forget everything that we've learned from the past, now, says, uh, now are they free to live as you are free to live. Why? Because an ancient learning passed away and left a place for truth to be reborn. All right. Beautiful. Welcome to you, Monica. Lovely to see you here. And Monica, I'm not sure where we are yet in the blue covered edition, but um, in the in the complete and annotated edition, it's chapter 31, section two, and the title is "The Passing of an Ancient Learning." So we're talking about how to let all that old learning go, okay? all that we've learned in the past. That has, uh, that has brought us to where we are today, all that we have learned from the past, the past learning, the learning that we're separate, the learning that we're guilty, the learning that we're just a body, the learning that we're inadequate, the learning that we're not enough, the learning that we don't have enough, the learning that we learned that, uh, that we're not good enough unless fill in the blank, okay? 
these uh, that this is describing descriptions of our past learnings. Of course, in Miracles says the only reason why we keep having a future that seems like the past, the only reason we keep having patterns, patterns that keep repeating, is because we are judging the present based on the past. We are judging the present based on our past learning. And that's why we keep having these repetitions. That's why we keep having these patterns that no matter what we do to try to change the pattern, the patterns continue. And this right off the bat is telling us how to let go of our ancient learning that we have learned from the past that has made us feel so guilty and, uh, and limited and afraid. And so what is it telling us? The first thing, the first thing that you got to do to accept the new learning of the truth of who you are, the truth of the matter is to forget for a moment, just for a moment, because they know that's all we can do, is to forget what we have learned. Okay? Forget what we've learned about ourselves. Forget what we've learned about the world. Forget what we've learned about each other. Forget what you've learned about this person uh, that you are in, in, in relationship with. Okay? That's what a holy instant is. A holy instant is a moment where you are still and you forget about everything that you learned in the past, about what things mean, about what everything is for, about the, what the world is, about who you are, about what you should want, what they should want, all those things. Of course, the Miracles tells us that if we weren't judging uh, the present and what's going on based on our past learning, that we would only be experiencing the joy the freedom, the love that resides in the present moment. And the truth that sets us free is not something that we learned in the past, correct? And so when you are, when you are present, now you have access to the truth that, that truth that we all share, the truth that is true for everyone in all space and time that cannot but produce joy and peace. Okay. So it's a beautiful, a beautiful meditation. And that is a fantastic meditation by which to let go of that which you want to let go of. You know, do you want to, you got some learning from the past, you got some programming, some conditioning from the past about how you're not good enough, about how you're alone and how you're separate and how lack is real. You got some conditioning around some guilt and shame. Uh, this is the process, a process that you can use called the practice of the holy instant that enables you to let your past learning go. And that way, now your mind is open to experience the present truth. The, 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 the Course in Miracles calls it the holy, satisfying nature of reality. Only when you have let go of the past learning and you are in the present moment can you experience the holy, satisfying nature of reality. And reality is that truth that we all share that uh, is uh, accessed and eternally sourced in the present moment. All right, so if you want a real deal change in your life where you're not just repeating your past again in your relationships and your situations, it comes from practicing the letting go uh, of what you've learned. So in other words, a practical application is, let's say I'm in a situation with a person here and, um, and I'm tired of the same old patterns repeating that have been playing out and repeating for too long. Then I, what I need to do is to practice the holy instant where I forget about everything I've ever, I've ever learned about this person, right? For practice, letting go of everything I think I know about this person. Or if it's a situation, taking an instant and practicing, practicing is the key word there. We know we're not doing mastery yet. 
practicing letting go of everything I know about this situation. Like remembering for a moment, I don't know what's the truth here. I don't know what this means. I don't really know what this situation is for. I don't really know who I am. I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really know what uh, they are doing or who they are. And by this practice of the holy instant, allowing your mind to be free for a moment from that old learning, you know. So we're practicing letting go what we think we know. And the Course of Miracles tells us that unless you meet the test of truth, which is perfect peace, then you don't know the truth about yourself or what's going on. So remember that. Remember about the test of truth. The test of truth is, uh, do you have perfect peace in this? Do you have perfect peace? You know, are you experiencing joy? Are you experiencing love and peace? Um, unless you are, you don't know the truth about yourself or them. You don't know what's really going on. You don't know what the reality of the matter is. Because if you know, if you knew what the truth, if you knew the truth of the matter, you could be only joyful and loving and peaceful and abundant and healthy. So the, that's the first thing. If you want to have a new experience, you're going to have to tell the truth about, uh, about what you think about the situation or the relationship right now which is that you don't know what it's for or what it means or uh, what your purpose should be, or you don't know the truth about yourself or them if you are not experiencing perfect joy. So the Course in Miracles says, if your learning from the past has failed to bring to you perfect happiness right now, then how valuable is that past learning? You know, did that past learning achieve making you happy okay all right um and so if your past learning is not served to bring you to this place of total fulfillment and happiness and peace and joy and aliveness then what is the value you know could that past learning be true do you want to still hold on to that past learning all right that's what the course wants us to ask uh, about any situation where we're not experiencing peace and joy and a sense of completion, all right? Beautiful. So, um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to read it again just because it's so beautiful and it's so powerful and then we'll move on from there. So, um, so were you able to find it? Yeah, I've been reading all over. Interesting. Okay. That's all right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so because I'm in the the original dictation, I'm in a original dictation version. Okay, there's lots of versions where it's just the original dictation. Um, I'm in one version called the Complete Annotated Edition. And in this book, it's chapter 31, section 2, and it's called The Passing of an Ancient Learning. In the In the blue book, it's somewhere else. I'm not sure where it is in the blue book. All right. So, I just want to say, hi, Trisha, welcome. Trisha, uh, we're in the purple book, Trisha, and it's 31-2. And hi, Andrew, lovely to see you. And hi, Ron, lovely to see you as well. All right, so, these first few paragraphs is teaching us how to practice the holy instant where we let go of all that we have learned from the past about ourselves, about the world, about this situation, about what's going on, uh, <clears throat> recognizing that we must not know the truth of the matter about what's going on or ourselves or if we're not completely happy. And this is the way to acknowledge the truth about the matter. Um, this is practicing a holy instant where we practice letting go of the old learning 
AKA what we thought we knew about ourselves and the situation and what's going on and where we let it go. We let go of the old learning for the purpose of allowing our minds to truly be open to the present reality of the matter, the present and eternal truths about ourselves and others. This is the practice called the holy instant where we allow the ancient learning to pass so that we can allow the new learning, the true learning about ourselves, about the situation to come into our awareness, making us happy. When you, are, when you know the truth, the real truth about yourself and them and the world, you experience, what does it say? Uh, complete satisfaction. You experience peace and joy and love all the attributes of God. All right. Beautiful. All right. I hear you, Monica. Monica says unworthy. The world is against us. These are all the things we've learned. These are all the things that you've learned. Thanks for sharing that. Exactly. Monica, you're saying that your past learning is that you learned you are unworthy and that the world is against you and that we can't possibly be abundant and happy. And you've also learned we've, you've never been in the body. So, okay. So, uh, me too. I have learned all those same things and most people have. So, um, this is how to let go of that old learning so that you can have a future truly unlike your past. Okay. You want to have a new kind of future? You want to have a new kind of relationship? You want to kind of have, have a new kind of confidence and appreciation for yourself? Uh, you gotta let, got to learn how to let go of the old learning, okay? realizing that if it didn't make you happy, it ain't true. It's only, so the only thing that does make you happy is what is true. Reality is established by God, our source and creator. All right. Thank you, Greg, for finding that. Oh, that's uh, beautiful. Okay. Beautiful. Section section one, Greg, of what in the blue book? In the blue book, thirty one, chapter 31, section one, okay. paragraph 12. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. It's just two paragraphs before uh, 31, two. Gotcha. So thank you. In the blue book, it's 31, section one, paragraph 12. Yes. All right. Yay. We found it. Okay. Thank you, dear, for doing that. Here we go. So I'm going to start back at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this is how you practice the holy instant, which is the letting go of a past learning that has not served to make you happy. It's called practicing the holy instant. It goes like this. Let us be still an instant. And in that instant we are still, let us forget all things we ever learned, which means all thoughts we had and every preconception that we hold of what things mean and what their purpose is. In this holy instant, let us remember not our own ideas of what the world is for. Let us not remember our own ideas of what this situation is for. We do not know. Let every image held of any one be loosened from our minds and swept away. This is how we be innocent of judgment. This is how we be unaware of any thoughts of evil or of good that ever crossed our mind of any one. Because the truth is, is that now in this moment you do not know them but you are free to learn of them and learn of them anew. Now, in this holy instant, they are born again to you and you are born again to them without the past that sentenced them to die and you with them. Now, in this holy instant, now where well, we're going to forget about everything we thought we knew about this person, they are free to live. And as you are free to live, why? Because an ancient learning passed away from your mind and left a place for truth to be reborn. Wow. 
Okay, this is the process too of any situation that is causing us pain, any situation that we're struggling with. Uh, any situation that we're struggling with is a situation where we're still going by the old learning, thinking that we know what's going on and what it means and what they're about and who we are. Okay, that's what it means when you're in a situation that you're struggling in. It means you are still going by your past learning, which you learned in the past, and uh, and um, and you're still thinking that you know what it means, even though you don't, because you're not experiencing joy and peace. Okay? So this is a process that you want to do in any situation that you're struggling in. You want to say. I do not know what this means. I do not know what it's for. I do not know who I am. I don't know who they are. <laughs> I don't know what my purpose is. Uh, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it's for. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who I am. I don't know who they are. Okay? That's, the, that's the first thing we wanna do in any situation we're struggling in so that we can clear the decks our, of our mind of what we think we know that isn't true so that we can allow the truth of who they are and who we are to dawn on our minds. So the truth of the matter, the truth of us can't dawn into our minds while the old learning is still uh, clouding it up and clogging it up. Okay. This is how we clear the old learning that we've been going by, that we're also suffering from, and this is also how we allow the real truth about the situation and ourselves and them to dawn upon our minds, which does what? Sets them free from the death sentence. Woo. And so what is the what did the what did the past learning do? The past learning has sentenced them and us to die. Oh, that's what the past learning is doing. I love it. Trisha says, I don't know what this means. I don't know what I am. I don't know who I am. I don't know who they are. I don't know what I'm doing. Very good. Exactly. That's what we uh, will be saying to ourselves when we want to have a truly new experience that is sat wholly satisfying for all and peace, peaceful and happy. Okay. And why? Uh, because the, the past is something that has sentenced them and us to die. That's what we learned in the past. We learned you're guilty and you know what the guilty deserve, right? We all learned about it in our religions, right? You know what the guilty deserve, right? Death, right? <laughs> you know, um, that's just what we all, that's what we all learned. That is the false past learning that we all learned um, and it is a learning that really was intended to enslave us and to kill us. I know that sounds negative and gruesome, but that is the truth. Obviously, obviously, um, we have learned that we are guilty and we deserve to die. Okay, Hence all of the suffering and the death that we experience in our world right now, unfortunately. But when you, when you release yourself and the situation and them from all of your past learning, now are they free to live? Now are they free to be new again? Now are they free to be reborn from the past that had sentenced them to die? And you right along with them. I love it. That's what happens when you free your mind from the past learnings. That's what happens when you free them from your past learnings is that now they are free to live and you are free to live right along with them. Man, that doesn't that sound good? I love hearing about how to free people from the past that had sentenced them to die. I love hearing how I can do that for myself as well. All right. Okay, now that you are practicing the holy instant and letting go of everything that you learned from the past, says they are free to live as you are free. Why? Because an ancient learning has passed away and left a place for truth to be reborn in your mind. All right. Isn't that beautiful? <clears throat> so it sounds like 
the holy instant to be still that heaven is not wanting to add to our knowledge but totally replace it. Yes, yes, exactly. He that that spirit is not wanting to add to our knowledge like, oh, I'm going to add to you. I'm just going to do a little tweak on your knowledge, Ann and Greg. <laughs> You're so smart, you know. Spirit's just like, I just want to replace everything you've learned. Mm -hmm. That's what spirit wants to do. Right. And to us and to our ego, to us uh, who identifies with our ego, who the ego who identifies with the past learning, I am what I learned in the past, to the ego that is death, okay? When really it's the past learning that had sentenced you to die. But to the ego, the letting go of the past learning, everything I learned in the past, that's death to the ego. So this is the last thing the ego, your ego will want you to do. But since you're not your ego, you can do this and you can let go of your past learning that sentenced you all to die. You can do that since you are not your ego. And by doing that, you can actually let go of your ego. You can actually be like, no thanks, no, no, no thanks. I mean, imagine that going, the ego's like, I am you, I rule you, you need me. And we go, no, no, no thank you. No, no, thank you. Bye. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> you know, it's like we don't realize we literally could just leave it behind. We literally could say no thank you to it because we made it. We, we forget about that. You know, it seems like the ego is so big and so external and so massive and so evil and so big. And it seems like we're so little compared to the, the, that whatever that evil is, you know, it's called the ego, right? The evil in the world is a projection of the, of the human ego, right? And uh, we forget that, that we made it. We, we forget that, you know, we were like shaking in our boots because of the ego, like, oh, the evil in the world is so big and I'm so little. Actually, no, right? We made the ego and we literally could say to it, uh, no thank you um, at, at any moment in time. And that is why there, that is why our ego is nothing. It, it can't be anything but insecure. Our ego can't be anything but anxious. Our egos cannot feel anything but threatened. Why? Because our ego is something that it doesn't know what it's threatened by, but it knows that there is something uh, that can end it with a decision. And that's why the ego, that's why it says in ego terms, you can't really experience real self-esteem because the ego can never actually feel really confident and secure because the ego is aware that at any moment its maker could uh, could end it, could could pull the plug. And so that's why there's a part of us, and it's not even a part of us, it's a part of our belief system. The ego is just a belief system that we adopted. It's not who we are. But it, 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 can't, there's, that's why that, that, I call it a part of us, even though it's not part of us, it's a belief system we adopted, but that there's a part of us, we call it the ego, that can never be self-confident, that can never not be anxious, that is always feeling threatened, that's always feeling insecure, no matter what it tells you to do, saying that you'll feel more confident and less threatened if you do that thing, right? So it's just good to know. And so whenever you're experiencing a sense of lack of confidence or insecurity or feeling threatened or feeling afraid or feeling inadequate, you are listening to that belief system in your mind. You are listening to that voice in your mind um, that can never feel confident that is always anxious, that is always feeling guilty, that is always angry and always feeling threatened, okay? <laughs> that's, just the, that's just the nature of the ego. And as long as we keep that, keep listening to that voice, 
then we too will experience those things right along the ego, not realizing that that's what our ego is feeling. That's what the not us is feeling. You know, what when my ego is feeling threatened, which it's always feeling threatened by truth and love and everything that's eternal, me, in other words, <laughs> um, the ego uh, never says, hey, that truth, that love that you're letting come close, it's really threatening me and I'm afraid I'm going to die, so could you cut it out? The ego says, you are going to die. Your ego tells you that you are going to die when it is feeling threatened by love or truth. All right. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Devo. I love it. Let me see if I can. Uh... Trisha says, when I was young, I died. When I was up there at home, De when I was, <laughs> when I was there at Home Depot. What is it? It's not Home Depot. Um, I do remember, oh, when I was up there, I do remember looking back and there was nothing there, just, just fog, fog right? Yeah, that's a great description of, of the body, of the ego world, fog. Just, yeah. Just confirm what the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit told you. Yes, me. beautiful. I, lo I love that, that spe spell check put Home Depot for when you were out of your body. <laughs> it's like... Oh, she was just at Home Depot. She wasn't out of her body. All right. Beautiful. Now, um, that now that was paragraph one. Okay. Now we're on, now we're moving on to paragraph number two, and but it's paragraph number what thirteen? Uh, twelve. Well, that'll be. You just finished thirteen in the blue book. Oh, okay. So, so now we're starting we're, section two now of the blue book. So now we're starting. It's in the blue book, it's chapter 31, section 1, paragraph 14 or 13. Uh, 31, 2 in the blue book. Okay, and what paragraph? Section 2, paragraph 1. Paragraph 1, An okay. An ancient lesson. An ancient lesson. So all that bogus, cruel, bogus learning that we learned so long ago. At Home Depot. At Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> and everywhere else is not overcome by the opposing of the new and old. So it's not going to be a battle. So it's not like the truth is going to come in and go, I'm here to slay you, you old learning. You know, uh, that's not how the old learning is going to go. It's not going to be uh it's not going to be slain by the new learning the new learning is not going to come in and kick its butt okay how is it going to happen so the old learning what we learned in the past that we're still suffering from that old learning is not vanquished that the truth be known the old learning isn't fought against to lose to truth's appeal in other words, there is no battle which must be prepared. There is no time to be expended. And there is no plan that need be laid for bringing in the new learning of the present and eternal truth. That's so wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. Okay. So there doesn't need to be a fight. Okay? It's not a fight where... where you know, because you think about like, oh, I'm going to overcome all that I've learned in the past. Oh, my God. That learning is it, not only did I learn it, but I over learned all my that I learned in the past about being guilty and about being separate, and about being embodied, and about being inadequate, and about being unworthy and about being guilty and how I should be ashamed. All that learning, which seems it seems immovable as a mountain. All that learning is just what it says you don't you there's no fight there's no battle okay that's not how the old learning about your old self concepts you know there's no fight there's no struggle uh, in letting it go nothing has to be vanquished you don't have to the truth doesn't have to come in your new learning doesn't have to come in and vanquish or fight against what you learned in the past, 
in order to let what you learned in the past go. Good to know. Uh, there is an ancient battle being waged against the truth, but truth does not respond. <laughs> right? So I love I love the the image, right? You know, the the ancient learning, the past learning that you've learned is definitely fighting against the truth, the truth about you. It's like, don't know that. Don't remember that. That's not true. That can't be true. Don't listen to that. So what you learned in the past, your ego is definitely fighting against the truth in you. And it has been doing it for a very long time. Okay. It says there is an ancient battle being waged against your truth but your truth does not respond. Now, who could be hurt in such a war unless they hurt themselves? Okay, here's a war where the ego is attacking the truth, but the truth is not responding in you. So, what kind of battle is that? <laughs> that's not. That's no real battle at all. And who could be hurt in a battle like that, where the ego? you know, is fighting against the truth in you with its tiny sword and its rusted shield, right? But the truth in you is not fighting back. Who could be hurt in such a battle unless you hurt yourself? And you have no enemy in truth. So even though the ego is definitely waging an ancient battle against the truth in you, the truth is still that you don't have an enemy even though the ego is trying to fight against your truth and has been doing for a long, long time. The truth is you still don't have an enemy. <laughs> wow. That's the truth of the matter. You don't have an enemy that you need to fight against, that you need to vanquish. You have no enemy. You know, the, all, you're, all you're doing, you're doing to yourself. Nobody's doing to you. Uh, what you think they're doing to you. Nobody's fighting against you. Nobody's waging war against you. You are doing it to yourself. Okay, You have no enemy in truth. In other words, there's not someone or something out there that is uh, attacking you. All right. Goes against all the teachings of almost every religion I know. And that is the opposite of every single thing that I have learned from the past. <laughs> that goes against every single thing that we have learned from the past. Uh, in the past, did you learn you had, that you had no enemy? <laughs> Not at all. In the past, all we learned was how to recognize all of our different enemies and how to try to defend ourselves against all these different enemies only to realize that, you know, you're going to lose in the long run. That's what we learned from the past. We learned we have, that we have lots of enemies, <laughs> more enemies than you can count. That's what we learned from the past. And it says, well, actually, you don't have any, any enemies, and that so-called ancient battle uh, is uh, a battle that the truth in you is not fighting back and which means it's a battle that in which you could only hurt yourself yeah. and if you could only hurt yourself then then what is that 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 means you have no enemy if you could truly only hurt yourself in any conflict then that what that means is that you don't have an enemy who's out to get you and that's what a course of miracles is telling us we don't have an enemy that's out to get us you know we have a, a, a false, false learning that we learned that is uh, fighting against the truth in us. But the truth in us is not responding. So what kind of battle is that? It's not a battle. And in that battle, you can't be hurt unless you hurt yourself. You have no enemy in truth. Was that that old saying from... You know, from World War II, you know, I have seen the enemy and, and, they, and they are me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's what A Course in Miracles is saying. That um, So, he says, you have no enemy in truth. Uh, 
and that mean and can you be assailed by dreams so if you don't have any enemy really then what you perceive to be assailing you is a fantasy it is just an idea it is a dream that you are dreaming if you can't be a say if you have no enemy then whatever seems to be attacking you is a fantasy it is a lie it is made up so let us review again what seems to stand between you and the truth of what you are because there are steps in its relinquishment okay so again that's we're now reviewing what it has been talking to us about which is what which is uh, how to relinquish whatever standing between you and your truth okay that's what we're doing here okay? understanding okay that the only what is it that's standing between me the real me uh, and my truth what is standing between me and my truth okay? let's review okay uh, why because uh, that's the first part in that's the first step in relinquishing whatever is standing between you and your truth I want you know our truth is that we are eternal unlimited guiltless sinless beings who are only loving and lovable forever that is our truth now what in the world is standing between us and and our acceptance of the truth about ourselves as innocent as sinless as eternal as not bodies as spirits that are free okay what is standing in the way of us accepting the truth the loving truth about ourselves right is it what we've learned in the past about ourselves no that's well that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna learn it says uh, there are steps in the relinquishment of whatever that is okay so let's learn the steps to let go of whatever standing between us and our true selves and so that we can do it the first step in the relinquishing of your old learning about yourself is a decision Ta -da! what kind of decision it's a decision which you make <laughs> it's a decision which you make that's the first step in the letting go of the old learning that you learned in the past of how you're guilty and you deserve punishment and you deserve to die okay the first step in letting go of that old learning from the past is a decision that you make <laughs> period but after you make that decision the truth is given you so first I go I want to let my old learning about myself go I don't like the way I feel <laughs> given I don't like the way my old learning has made me feel right now I do not like the self-concept that I've learned about myself in the past that has me now feeling guilty and afraid and ashamed and limited and and worried and anxious and on and on and on okay um, so first I make a decision that I don't want it I want to let it go and then the then the truth about me is then given so that's the process First, I decide I want to let go of that old learning that hasn't made me happy. And then after that, the truth about myself is given me. All right? Beautiful. <clears throat> it says, so that is paragraph two in my book. <clears throat> That's the middle of paragraph two in mine. That's the middle of paragraph two in the blue book. All right. I love that, that process beautiful so how about we join in this holy instant right now and decide that we want to let our past learnings about ourselves and the world go okay let's join in making that decision that that that's our part 
in letting go the past learning, which has uh, enslaved us. Okay, the first part is a decision we make, and then after we decide, we want to let it go. Now the truth about us, the current truth, the eternal truth is given us. Beautiful process. Paragraph three. But here's the problem. <laughs> Ready for the problem? We want to establish truth. That's the problem. You would establish truth. Okay. That's why we're upset. I'm upset right now because I want to establish the truth. <laughs> I don't want the truth to be given me. I want to decide what the truth is. Okay. It says, no, that is going to get you more of the past. So that will make your future just like your past. That will make all your future relationships just like all your past relationships. Okay? So the problem is, is that we want to establish the truth. But remember it said the truth is given us. We don't know the truth. That's why we're suffering. And so the truth is something we need that needs to be given us. And, but instead of asking for the truth, and instead of saying, I want to let what I've learned go, we're saying, I'm going to establish the truth. I know what's going on here. I know why they did that. I know who they are. I know why they did that. I know what their actions mean. I know what this situation means. I know what it's for. I know what I'm doing. I know why they did that. That's us trying to establish the truth, okay? And that is the problem, all right? So it says, you're, you want to establish the truth. And since you want to establish truth, you, by your wish, are setting two choices to be made each time you think you must decide on anything, okay? If you want to decide what the tr and establish what the truth is, now you've just set up uh, two choices to be made every time you think you must decide on anything. But whatever those two choices that you set up to be made each time you think you must decide on anything, neither one of those choices is true. Neither one of those choices are different. So the moment you go, I know what's true here, even though I do not pass the test of truth at all, that that moment that you decide that you want to establish the truth and you're about to say what it means, even though you don't know, um, whatever it is that you come up with is not, will not be true. Okay? Why? Because truth is not something you establish. Truth is something that is given you after you've decided that you no longer want the old self-concept and the old learnings that you learned from the past. That's how truth comes in. Truth is not established by us. And that's where our sufferings come from. That's where our problems come from. We are trying to establish the truth. We're trying to be the author of reality. It's called judgment. Okay? And that's the problem. He says... But we must look at those two choices that, uh, that you set each time you think you must decide on anything. We've got to look at both those choices before we can look past them to the one alternative that is a different choice. But not in dreams you made that this truth be obscured to you. What you are choosing between is not a choice and what you are choosing between gives but the illusion that your choice is free. So when you're like, well, I am going to decide what this means. Whenever you say, well, I know what truth is, I'm going to establish truth. What you're doing is you're establishing now two choices. Okay. My, 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 my so-called truth that I would establish, and then also the truth. Now, it says, thus your choice in the matter of what the truth of it really is, is really not a choice at all. The leader and the follower emerge as separate roles, 
the leader and the follower each seeming to possess advantages you would not want to lose. So in the fusion of being a leader and a follower, there appears to be the hope of satisfaction and of peace. So if I, I'm understanding it right, when we are trying to establish truth, like I, the, I know what this means, you are setting up a separation between you and the other. And once you've set up a separation between you and another, now all you can see, now all you can experience um, is a leader and follower. Okay? When you see yourself separate and different from another person, then all you're now perceiving is, all right, now who's going to be the leader, who's going to be follower in this situation, in this relationship? And only when I experience some kind of magical fusion between leader and follower will I experience satisfaction. Okay, that's an illusion. It says only in the fusion of being a leader and the follower, uh, there appears, appears to be the hope of satisfaction and of peace. Okay? And it says, and since you want to be the author of reality, and since you're trying to establish reality, which means now you see others as separate from you and different from you, now you see yourself divided into both these roles, leader and follower and you see yourself forever split between the two wow that is so deep about what happens when we see other people as separate when when you're going to be establishing reality you're going to see people as separate from you and when you see people as separate from you you know now it's like now you see the the opponent now you see the enemy now you see the competitor now you see the leader or the follower like who's going to be in control who's going to be in control who's going to lead who's going to follow and uh now that we're trying to establish reality now we see ourselves divided into both these roles forever split between the two which means every friend or enemy becomes a means to help you save yourself from being either the leader or the follower. And perhaps you call it love. Oh, I love find somebody who wants to be the leader when I want to be the follower. Oh, I'm in love. Or perhaps you think it is murder justified at last. <laughs> wow. So sometimes when you see, you know, when you see others as separate from you, sometimes you see them as the leader who will lead you, who want to be the follower, and perhaps you call that love. Okay. Sometimes you see that other person as the, uh, as, the, as the leader when you don't want to be the follower, and so now you think that it is murder justified at last. Okay. But, you know, what it's saying is that, right, and why is it that, uh, why is it, that we it's murder justified at last because we hate the person we gave the leader's role to when we want to be the leader establish reality and we hate the person as well for not assuming the leader role when we want to let the follower in us arise which means give away the role of leadership Woo -wee. you really see the, the power struggles that we do in our relationships. This really explains that a lot. It really explains it well. If you see yourself as separate from another, you can't help but see them as, uh, as separate from you. And you can't help but think, if they'll just be the leader, when I want to let the follower in me arise, I'll be happy, I'll be loved. And nor can you think, you can't help but think sometimes that, um, that you hate that one that you gave the leaders to, leaders role to when you want to be the leader, okay? And you see yourself forever split between the two roles and always, uh, and either calling it murder justified at last or calling it love. Very interesting. 
very interesting dynamic that once you know of it, you can see it uh, very clearly in, in your relationships. It's like when we see ourselves separate, we can't help but see others as separate from us, leader or follower. And, and that's our role. Now that we see ourselves separate, now the role we get we give to the other person unconsciously is, honey, I want you to be the leader when I want to let the follower in me arise. Okay, all right, and if you do that, we'll call it we'll call it love. But if you don't take the if you take the leader's role when I want to be the leader, then I'm going to hate you, <laughs> and and my judgment uh, will be justified, and that will be grounds uh, justifying murder. Okay, do you see how that goes? in our relationships. It's like, whatever I want you to be uh, is, you know, according to what role I want to play, leader or follower. If you say yes to that role when I, that I'm giving to you in the moment, which is about to change, then we call it love. If you don't, if you take the leader's role when I want to be the leader's role, then uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna call it hate. <laughs> we're gonna call it murder justified at last. You see how that, and that's how it goes in all of your relationships when you are the, trying to establish the truth, when you wanna be the author uh, of reality, when you think you know what's going on, and when you think you know what should be happening, and when you think that you are the author of reality and that truth comes from you, then you're going to see everybody as either the leader or the follower. You're going to see them as your competitor. You're going to see them as your potential enemy. <sighs> wow. And that's why our relationships uh, are experience a lot of pain a lot of despair, a lot of depression, a lot of anger, a lot of hurt broken into by periods in which all that pain and anger seems, seems to be gone. Okay. That this explains it. Okay. Uh, I don't see, if I see others as separate and different from me, then I don't just see equals. I don't see a mirror of myself. I see someone who is there to be the leader when I want to be the follower and someone who should be the follower when I want to be the leader. And then if they don't, if they don't say yes to the role I've assigned to them, then, you know, then we have a problem. <laughs> then now my hate is justified. All right. Beautiful. Now, it says... And this is what you made others for. You made them to fulfill whatever role you want them to assume at, at your pleasure. That's the role. That is what you made them for. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I just want you to know, honey, the reason why we're in a relationship <laughs> is so you can fulfill whatever role that I want to give to you as I, you know, as I am going to be establishing truth. Okay. So is that okay? All right. Great. <laughs> oh, and you're, oh, and you've given me the same role too. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> it's only fair. All right. It says, this is what you've made your relationships with others for, and this is what you've learned to think that their purpose is. Yet we are so insane that we truly believe that their purpose is to fulfill whatever role that we have established for them as we are establishing what reality is. Okay? That is what we've learned in the past to think that their purpose is in our lives. You're just here to take the role that I'm giving to you and what I dreamed my life was meant to be. And so when I wanna be the follower, then I want you to be the leader. And when, uh, and when I want to, uh, to be the follower, I want you to be the leader. And when I wanna be a leader, I want you to be the follower. Okay, so. This is what we've learned in the past is their role. That's their purpose we've learned. And as you can see, the results 
of learning that that is their purpose in our lives. You can see what results from that kind of past learning about relationships, about others. So we learned in the past that we're separate from others. And what that means is if somebody is an other, that means that they always, that, that, that their purpose is for you, to fulfill something for you. And when you see others as separate and different from you, because that's what we learned in the past, you can't help but see them as an enemy, you know, because you can't help but distrust whatever purposes, whatever different purposes they may have. That's what A Course in Miracles tells us about the nature of, uh, of, re of relationships in our perception. Beautiful. Diana says, it seemed to be really loud the last few days. Lots of old trash came up, LOL. So thankful for this class and reminder. Beautiful. Diana says, oh, dang. Uh, Diana says, I see how I did this and I went into analysis paralysis. Yes, beautiful. All right, let's all take a breath on that one, shall we? <laughs> All right, yes, and so you can see here how, how in order to have a holy relationship, a, a sane, peaceful, loving, supportive, empowering, safe, respectful relationship with others, it truly comes from doing the practice that we heard at the beginning of the section, which is to... Uh, consciously, intentionally practice the holy instant where you let go of everything you have ever learned about this person and who they are and what they should be wanting, what they should be doing, what they should be, you know, whatever. Okay. So, you know, we, all we have is two choices. Uh, what we have learned about who they are and what they should be doing and what they should want and how they should be and the truth about them uh, and what their purpose is that is given us. Those are our two choices. And the moment that you think the reality is up to you to establish, then now you got these two choices. All right. So we want to pray. if you want to have if you want to have a truly different kind of relationship, it entails the letting go of whatever is standing between you and the truth of who you are and the truth of who they are, and what's standing in the in between you and the truth about you and them is what you've learned about them and what they should be about and what they should want and what the function they should fulfill for you based on your past learning. All right. I love it. I got my little, my little antenna hair sticking up here. This is my little radio antenna <laughs> so that I can hear better for y'all. All right. Hi, Demi. Lovely to see you. Okay. So beautiful. And According to our past learning, unless this person serves the role we give them according to our whim of the moment, then that person has not fulfilled the function that we gave to them. And so this person deserves death because this person has no purpose and no usefulness to you. <laughs> uh, that's what we learned about others. That's what we learned about others and relationships from the past. Okay? And now, like I said earlier, now you can see why most relationships entail a lot of suffering, a lot of pain, a lot of guilt, a lot of disappointment, a lot of depression, a lot of anger broken into by periods in which those negative emotions seem to be gone. Okay? Why? Because we have learned that Unless we've learned that their purpose should be to take the leader role when we want to be the follower, that they should be the follower when we want to let the leader in us emerge. 
And we've learned from the past that unless they fulfill that purpose that we've assigned to them as author of reality, then they have not fulfilled the function that we gave them. And so they deserve death because they have no purpose, which means no usefulness to us. Wow, that's cold. You see why our relationships tend to be so much suffering involved. That's what we've learned about what relationships are for. That's what we learned about relationships, what they're for. Is that uh, I, you are for me, you are here to fulfill whatever role that I give you. <laughs> you know, you're here to be whatever I want you to be in the moment, even though that's going to be changing every five minutes. Okay, and you, that's your role, that's your purpose. And if you don't fulfill the role that I gave you, then you deserve to die because you have no usefulness to me. Now, of course, we don't say that out loud, but that is what we mean <laughs> as we are giving them guilt and trying to change them and giving them guilt as to why they should change to fulfill the role that we have assigned to them and what we've dreamed our life is meant to be in this moment. Wow, that is, that's right, Monica. That is so true and so deep. Wow. And that you can't help but, that can't, you can't help but do that as soon as you decide you want to be, you want to be the author of reality and you're going to establish truth, a.k.a. judge. Okay. Now, what about this other person? What about them? Okay, you've given them this role and your job is your your function and your role is to be the leader when I'm going to be follower and to be the follower when I want to be the leader. And, I, and if you don't fulfill that function, then you deserve to die because you have no usefulness to me. Okay, well, what about them? Well, what do they want of you? Well, what could they want but what you want of them? So they want the same thing. You know, they want you to be the leader when they want to be the follower. And they want you to be the follower when they want to be the leader. And uh, so they want the same thing of you that you want of them. And herein is life as easily as death. But what you choose, you choose as well for them. Two calls you make to them, the other, as they make to you. And what are the two calls? Leader or follower. Okay. So we're making two calls to them. I want you to be the leader when I want you to be, and I want you to be the follower when I want you to be the follower, when I want to be the leader. Two calls you're making to them, just like they are making two calls to you, be leader or follower when I want you to be. And between these two calls to be leader or follower is choice. Because from these two choices, because from between these two choices, there is a different outcome. Now, if this person be the leader or the follower to you, it doesn't matter. If you've chosen they be the leader or the follower, it don't matter because you've chosen death. If you, choose, if you give them the role of leader or you give them the role of follower, it doesn't matter because you've given them the same thing. You've given them death. Because okay. you've said, your purpose is to fulfill the role I've assigned to you. And, and, and I'm calling it love. And that's your purpose in our relationship. You're here to fulfill the role I gave to you in our relationship where I am establishing the re reality. I'm the author of reality. I know how this relationship should be going. I know what should be happening in our relationship. I know uh, what your behavior means. I know what your behavior should be. Okay? That's me believing that I am the author of reality and that, re and that truth is for me to establish. Okay? <laughs> if you think truth is up for you to establish, you can't help but think that their truth is for you to establish. And when you give somebody a role to fulfill, you are saying to you are saying to them, I establish your truth. I you know, I I know you. I, I know what you should be doing and what you should be wanting. And you should be doing and wanting what I want you to do in the moment. And then when I want you to do something else, you should do that too. Okay. That's 
that's, that's us uh, establishing truth. And that's, which means that is us establishing what somebody else's role should be for us uh, in what we dream our life is meant to be. And if they do not accept that role that we have given to them, and that is also changing by the moment, by the way, then they have no usefulness to us and uh, unconsciously now they deserve to die. Okay? Like, I do not need you anymore. You are not gonna fulfill the role that I assigned to you since I know you and what you should be doing and I know what should be happening in our relationship because I know everything. Okay? Says, uh, it says, it says, so it doesn't matter whether you've given them the role of leader or follower, because when you've given them that kind, that role, either one of them, you're actually giving them, giving them death, you know, because that's true. You know, how do you feel? How do we feel when people in our relationships disappoint us? We're like, you know, you're dead to me. You know, we, we, you know, it's like, you have no use to me. Okay. So this is just another way to the truth of saying that, uh, that we are offering them death. We're offering them guilt. We're offering them, you know, be gone. <laughs> I am banishing you from, from my life. Be gone. That's a, that's a choice for death. All right. So if they be leader or the follower to you, it doesn't matter because you've chosen death. But if this person is calling for death or they're calling for life, if this person is calling for hate or for forgiveness and for help, then that's not the same in outcome. Okay. So if you're, if you're choosing, if you're giving them the role of leader and fall fo or follower, that's, they're both the same. That's death. But if you are seeing them as either calling for, for hate or for forgiveness, then that's not the same in outcome. So, says if you hear one call then you are separate from them and you are lost so if you hear the call from them to be leader or follower then you are separate from them and you are lost but if you hear the other call from them which is the call for love the call for equality then you will join with them and in your answer to that call is your freedom found, okay? Beautiful. Let's take a breath on this one and just see where we're at here, okay. Beautiful. And uh, so we're talking about, so I don't know, let's, just take a moment and think about for a moment any relationship that you are experiencing or have experienced in the past where there was that uh, where there was that power struggle where there was that conflict um, where where is that your life right now where you're experiencing conflict in a relationship you might want to look at that and go okay in what way am I holding a grievance with this person because they're not taking the leader role when I wanted to let the follower in me arise or where they're not being the follower in, the, in our relationship when I wanted to be the leader. So look and see where and how that um, this dynamic is playing out. You know, because anywhere that there's conflict in a relationship, there's you have you have both been giving to each other a role for them to play as if you know what they should be doing and how it should be going in the relationship okay they you're doing it to them and they're doing it to you you know that's why that's where conflict in relationship come from we give each other roles for them to play as if we know, thinking we know what it all means and how it should be going, right? And then we call it love. We say, if you take the role I assigned to you, uh, even though it's gonna be changing in a few minutes, then we call that love. 
if you don't accept the role that I've assigned to you in this moment, then I, then I'm going to feel like we're going to feel like the other person has no usefulness, like they're dead to us. Okay. Um, so, you know, and that's where the whole power and con the power struggles come in, in our relationships. <clears throat> now, um, so he says, we're either hearing them calling for, uh, us to be leader or follower, or we're hearing them calling for love. And the voice you hear in them is but your own voice. So what are they asking of you? Okay. If the voice you hear in them is your own voice, then what is their voice asking of you? Which means what is your voice asking of you through them? That's what it's asking us to ask. And listen well to the voice you hear in them. Listen well as to what their voice is asking of you, since it's your own. Listen well. Why? Because they are asking what will come to you. So whatever they're asking of you, whatever they're asking from you, are they asking for competition and separation or are they asking for love? Okay. Whatever you, whatever you hear them asking for is going to come to you. So it's interesting. We're determining. We are determining uh, what what will come to us through them. So not them. We are determining. You know, it's like that old saying, you know, we are teaching people how to treat us. We are determining uh, what comes to us through them. And we're determining that according to which voice in them that we are listening to. Are we listening to the, their ego? that wants to play competition and power struggles, leader and follower? Or are we listening to their voice that is really just asking for love? That is just asking for love. Which voice is it that we are, that they're making two calls to us just like we're making two calls to them, but which call, which voice are we going to listen to in them? Okay, well, Whatever voice we listen to in them is going to determine what comes to us through this interaction, through this relationship. Wow, very interesting. So basically, I'm determining what they're saying to me, depending on which voice and which call in them that I'm listening to. The truth is, is that their their true self is always calling for love calling to love it's their true self is always calling to join with me that's the truth their ego is always calling to compete with me or to to compete power struggle with me what i experience of this person i determine because i'm the one deciding which one of those calls they're making to me that I am going to answer. That's because they are asking what will come to you. Why? Because in them we see an image of ourself and in them we hear our voice requesting what we want. Okay, wow, who knew? Is that what you learned in the past about relationships and others and who they are and what they want and what their purpose is? Not at all. This is not at all what we learned about others and ourselves in the past. It says, so given all that, given all that, before you answer their call, you need to pause to think of this. The answer that I give to this person is what I am asking for. And what I learn of them is what I learn about myself. Wow. And when is it that we need to say that? We need to pause before we answer people. We need to pause before we respond. Pause for the cause. Before you respond, before you answer somebody, you need to pause 
before you respond and think of this. The answer that I give them is what I am asking for. Am I giving them the answer of separation and grievance and uh, fear and guilt? Am I giving them the response of competition? Okay. Whatever answer that I give to them is what I am asking for. Whatever I answer to them is what I am asking for and that is what will be coming my way. Okay. Why? Because in them, you are seeing an image of yourself, and in them, you are hearing a voice requesting what you want. Why? Because you ain't separate. That's why. And so the Course in Miracles is teaching us we're not separate. We're not different. We think we are, but we're not. We think that just because we have different bodies and different e egos, then we're different, but we're not. That We are one. We are connected. So whatever answer I'm going to give to them is what I am asking for. And what I learn of them is what I learn about myself. So what is it I'm learning uh, Learning about them? Am I learning that, that they are, you know, a jerk and that they are so this and so that? That is what I am learning about myself. Now, after you have paused to think of this before you respond to somebody, then wait an instant and be still. What does that mean? That means forget everything you thought you heard from this person and remember how much we do not know. This is what we want to do. This is how we allow our past learning about relationships, our past learning about others to go. Good riddance. So that we can allow a new kind of relationship, a new kind of relationship with this person to emerge. Unless you remember that you do not know them, until you remember you do not know yourself, until you remember you don't know what they are for, what purpose they should serve, uh, until you remember that, until you pause to remember that this person is part of you, however you respond to them is what you're going to be asking for, and whatever you learn about them, you're going to be learning about yourself then you can never let the old programming and conditioning about relationships go to experience something truly new. So, um, it says the, the truth about this person is that they neither lead nor follow, but this per the truth about this person is they walk beside us on the same, self same road. The truth about this person that you would learn if you would let your old learning go is that this person is like you, as near or far away from what you want as you will let them be. The truth about this person is that you don't make any gains that that person doesn't make with you. And the truth about this person is that you fall back if this person doesn't advance. So, given all that, don't take this person's hand in anger. Take their hand in love because in their progress do you count your own progress which means you and they are going to go separately along the way you are going to go separately along the way unless you keep them safely by your side what, we're, what it's saying here is that this person the truth about this person is that they are your equal in God's love that's the truth about them that's what you that's what your past learning about them uh, did not teach you. Okay. So, um, and it's the past learning about them that they are not your equal in God's love that has produced relationships that are so full of conflict. But because they are your equal in God's love, will you be saved from all appearances and you will answer to your true self who is calling to you. 
All right. So we're going to stop there. Wonderful. Hi, Dan. Lovely to see you. Hi, Paul. Lovely to see you too. Trisha says, take a breath. For sure, I was holding my breath, diving in. That's some deep knowledge. Indeed, it is. Wow. Yeah, this is one of those sections that is truly teaching us uh, that we are not separate. That as we see others, we see ourselves. As we hear them, we are going to hear of ourselves. Whatever call we hear from them is what we, what we are asking for, for ourselves. Now, this is the new learning. This is the truth that is given us about ourselves, about others that we are in relationship with. This is the truth that is given us. This is the truth about ourselves in relationship to others that can produce a truly new kind of relationship. Okay. Um, and as you can see, this new, this truth, this new learning um, is the exact opposite of everything that we have learned in the past in that ancient overlearning about who we are and who they are and what they should be doing and what they should be wanting and what their purpose is. So, um, so, you know, the, the beginning of this section is how to let an ancient learning pass away. And the ancient learning that we need to learn to let pass away is the ancient learning that is making us always feel separate uh, and in competition and in struggles, power struggles with each other. That, that's the ancient learning that we've learned that is passing away so that the present truth can emerge within our own minds. Um, and so, so we don't want relationships like we've experienced in the past. We don't want to keep the ancient learning about relationships. We don't want to keep that. It has produced relationships where it's a lot of conflict broken into by periods in which the conflict seems to be gone. We, don't, we want to let the ancient learning about ourselves and relationships go so that we can accept the truth of the matter, which is that which is that we are not different. The truth is that we are equal in God's love to everyone. What we're trying to learn and accept is that this person is our equal in God's love and that at only as they progress do we progress. And if, if they fall back, we fall back. Why? because we are equal in God's love. And uh, only when I stop trying to give them the role of leader, when I want to be the follower, and I stop trying to give them the role of follower, when I want to be the leader, thinking that that is their function in my life, and if they don't fulfill that function, then they serve no use for me, and they deserve to die. So that, that, uh, is that is the old learning about who we are and what others are to us. That is the old learning that produces relationships that are full of conflict. Um, so, and then the new learning, the new and eternal learning is that the truth is, is that this person is a mirror of yourself. This person is an extension of yourself. As you see them, you will see yourself. Whatever you hear them asking for is what you are asking for for yourself. Okay? And only as they progress do you progress, and if they fall back, you fall back. But the truth is, is that you are equals in God's love, and because you and they are equals in God's love, they're not here just to fulfill your scripts and vice versa. They're equals in God. They are your equals in God's love because they are your equals in God's love. You will be saved 
from all of your ego. You will be saved from your own ego. Why? Because they are, because they are your equals in God's love. When we are equals, then we are saved from the ego, which is the idea of separateness and competition, and we're saved from all of the symptoms that come from that. All right. Beautiful. All right. So we're going to stop here, and I'm going to do just a a couple minutes of an integration meditation that I usually do to end my classes where we just take the ideas and we just breathe them in, let them, let them trickle down from our, our, our brain, you know, just trickle down into the depths of our minds, a time when we use them, a time when we just let them integrate. All right, so I want you to close your eyes. Take a breath. I'm going to turn the music up a little bit. All right. All right. So close your eyes. Take a breath. Notice how you feel right now. Notice how you feel hearing these ideas, even if you don't understand them or welcome them, even if you've had intense resistance to them. How do these ideas feel in your mind? in your heart, in your body. Beautiful. Now, I want you to bring to your awareness, I want you to bring to your awareness a situation where you're experiencing conflict with another or with others. Bring, whether it's a relationship or a situation, all relationships are situations and vice versa. So I want you to bring this situation or relationship into your awareness where there has been conflict. And now I want you to be still an instant. And what that means is I want you to forget all things you've ever learned about this situation or them or yourself for just a moment. And for just an instant, I want you to forget every preconception that you hold of what this situation or relationship means. And I want you to forget your preconceived notions about what this person's purpose is. Forget about it. Forget all things you ever learned about this situation, this type of situation, what you've learned about them, what you've learned about yourself, what you've learned about relationships. I want you to forget what you think that this situation or relationship means. I want you to forget what you thought their purpose is. And take a breath. For just an instant, I want you to forget your own ideas of what this relationship or situation is for. I do not know. Tell yourself, I do not know 
what this situation or relationship is for. <clears throat> I do not know what it means. <clears throat> I do not know what its purpose is. I do not know what their purpose is. I do not know what my purpose is. I do not know. <sighs> and take a breath and feel the release. Feel the relief. And now I want every image you have held of this situation or this person or yourself to be loosened from your mind and swept away. In other words, for just a moment, be innocent of judgment. For just a moment, be unaware of any thoughts of evil or of good that ever crossed your mind of this person or yourself or this situation. Now, you don't know them. Tell yourself, now I don't know them. Now I don't know who I am or who they are. Now I don't know what this situation means. But you are free to learn of this person and learn of them anew. Now is this person born again to you and you are born again to them without the past that sentenced them to die and you with them. Now, without your past learning, now you are free to live. Now they are free to live as you are free to live now. Why? Because now an ancient learning about them, about the world and relationships has passed away and left a place for truth to be reborn. And take a breath. And now I want you to again picture this person in your mind's eye, this person with which you had been having conflict. And I want you to see them in your mind's eye and I want you to see them giving you two calls. One call is the call to play leader or follower. And another call that they're making to you is the call of love and the call of equality. And I want you to decide which call from them that you are going to hear and answer. And I want you to, when you look at this person, I want you to say, say to yourself, in this person I am seeing an image of myself and in this person I am hearing my voice requesting what I want. And so now, before you answer this person's call, I want you to pause to think of this. The answer that I give to this person is what I am asking for. And what I learn of this person is what I learn about myself. And then wait an instant and be still, which means forget everything you thought you heard, remembering how much you do not know now. And breathe. And then notice how you feel now related to this situation or this person, this relationship. Beautiful. 
Very beautiful. All right, you guys, good work. This is a great section. This is a great class to watch uh, several times over so that you can remember, remember, remember how to let your old learning about yourself and relationships in the world go so that you can accept the new learning that produces the new earth and a new kind of relationship, a holy relationship that is like a sanctuary, that is like a garden for all. I appreciate you all more than I can say, and I will see you next time I see you.